the lost pages in the minds and hands of Zade Comics comes the first book in their connected universe of heroes, with a cover by legendary illustrator Simon Bisley. The Lost Pages is a story of a magical book in the hands of a homeless man. Within it are tales lost to time of heroes from different eras and walks of life, all protecting humanity from evil. As the word of the book is spoken around a trash fire, new crusaders of justice will be revealed to this world. A supernatural vigilante on the hard streets of Chicago named the Silhouette. An ancient sorcerer battling horrific myth on the high seas known as Wild Card. A modern day mental monster from the mind of a bodybuilder babe, Crimstone and a pulp hero from the 1930s, a master of disguise donning the mask of the masquerade. This is just the beginning, for in the future these heroes and more will come together to write the end of the world. But for now, the ink of life flows on every page. Will you be there to read it? Only on Indiegogo. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Phil from Zade Comics. I'm the writer and co-creator of Magic Comp and The Lost Pages, which you guys just saw. Hopefully the sound was working on that. And uh, yeah, we are back with another episode of Crossing the Border, where we go and do an interview with a creator of another comic. Um and uh talk about their book so yeah that was that was our book the lost pages if you guys haven't checked it out please do so the link is in the description below um you can pull it up another tab um or we could you know look at it for a second as our guest comes to uh comes on in now this is uh, our book and you know we just passed twenty thousand dollars today which is amazing thank you all of our backers everybody that's been sharing out and all the supporters so we are adding a lot of awesome stuff um if you guys did not back then you probably didn't see this um oh actually we we tweeted it out so i could pull up the tweet but we just unlocked the newest character of the lost pages and that is drift legend so let me pull up drift legend right now uh actually i could do this oh that didn't work so drift legend is like our uh mixture of speed racer and like shang chi he's like this kung fu martial artist and uh this is an amazing trading card drawn by Odie from xenotype so if you guys are familiar with uh, Liam's book, Xenotype, Odie is a great manga artist from Greece. Um, he's a young lad. He's about 20 years old. And he just whipped this thing out and uh, did a great job with, uh, with it. You know, did an awesome job, digital art. We got El Gargoyle in the chat. What's up, brother? Um, thank you for always supporting El Gargoyle. You're always a, a great chat member and supporter of Zade Comics. And you made this happen, man. You helped, um, you know, contributed to the success of the Lost Pages and made this trading card come true. Drift Legends uh, trading card done by Odie. And Kyung Lee right now is working on the amazing uh, story, short story that's going to go in the bonus comic. So if you guys did not get your hands on the bonus comic yet, please do so so you could read about drift legend and all the awesome other other heroes in uh the lost pages bonus comic i'm really really excited for that uh yeah but we are here to talk about another book and that book as you guys could tell by the thumbnail as you could tell by the uh title is in fact six gun gorilla now, 
Brian, the creator of Six Gun Gorilla, is um, he's running a little bit late, but that's okay. Uh, so what he's doing right now is getting ready to come on and talk about his awesome book. Uh, oh, there he is. The man, the myth himself, Brian Criscow. What's up, brother? What's up, man? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear, I hear you perfectly. Okay, man. all right. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm late, but I had to uh, reboot my computer. I was having some uh, technical difficulties. No problem, man. No, no problem at all. This is. I think this is the first time we've had you on the stream. Is that correct? I think so. Absolutely, right? man. I I am honored. Uh, thank you for the invite, brother. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I've been on your streams with Drew, Mr. E, uh, a couple times, and you know, uh, Six Gun Gorilla has been so popular. I've definitely wanted to get on on here, man. Uh, I love the style of the book. I love westerns. Um, my favorite movie of all time is Tombstone. So, oh, excellent choice, excellent yeah, choice. That's uh, it's, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, we got Hand of the Sin also in the chat. What's up, brother? Thanks for t tuning in and joining us. Now, if you guys haven't seen this book, you're in for a treat. Um, just the, all the different artists that are doing covers for it, um, the interior art, it's just mind-blowing. And, you know, it, it takes a, um, you know, classic story and just blows it out of proportion with this uh, this kind of old-timey character, right? How did this yeah, uh, actually yeah. come to be for you uh, getting into writing this character? Well, what happened was I was perusing a website on public domain heroes. Yeah. And I have a thing for the golden age. I have a thing sure. for, for pulps, right? Edgar Rice Burroughs, Robert E. Howard, the old Doc Savage stories, yeah. all that stuff. Tarzan. I'm just, I'm just a sucker for it. Right. And, I was perusing this just this website, you know, and just casually, and suddenly, like one name jumped out at me, and it was yeah. Six Gun Gorilla. Yeah, it was very fuck you. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I, I'm sorry for uh, if you know, pardon my French, but you know, I grew up on like Richard Pryor and uh, George Carlin, so I'm a potty. It's pot. very unapologetic, right? It you is. Know, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, I need to read this story. Mm -hmm. And so I started researching it. And what I discovered was it had never been reprinted. It was originally printed in 1939 in a British pulp magazine for little boys called Wizard. Yeah. And no one knows who the author or authors were because wow. there's no author credited. Wow. And it and there were some original illustrations and stuff, and nobody would even know that this story exists. Would nobody would even know that this story exists if it hadn't been written about in a book that was written about pulp literature for uh, little boys in like uh, wartime and post-war uh, England, mm -hmm. right? Wow. And. Uh, I discovered that uh, I was not going to be able to get a copy because there are only two copies left in existence, wow. both both of which are under lock and key in a London museum. That's pretty badass. So I was less, I was like, what? damn, like, you know, talk about tickling my ass with a feather, man. <laughs> and um, so I was I live about 50 minutes outside of New York City. And there's nothing out here but shopping malls. So yeah. I was gonna. I hopped in my car and headed to a shopping mall that has like the last Arthur Treacher's fish and chips on the planet, which is my favorite junk food by far. Yeah. And so I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna like you know drown my sorrows in some deep fried goodness. And on the way over there, I'm listening to the Hawk the Slayer soundtrack. Hawk the Slayer is a, and if people don't know this, my UK brothers will know this. It was like a, a British um, sword and sorcery movie from like the early 80s. And it has like this funky, like uh, electronic score. Cool. Yeah. And so I know you're probably wondering, like, what does this, what the hell does this <laughs> have to do with anything, right? What's up, Simon? Yeah. Hey, brother. Full house today. Yeah, man. Uh, so by the time I arrived at the shopping mall, I mm -hmm. had the I had the entire story. 
Oh, that's awesome, man. Now, going back before that, is this like, are you, how'd you get into writing? Were you writing stuff before you did Suck Six on a Gorilla? Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was writing comic books ever since I was a little boy. Yeah. Um, I actually recently going through, uh, you know, boxes of like old books found one of my early comic books. And <laughs> unfortunately, it doesn't turn up that well on screen, but I'm thinking about scanning it and putting it out there. You know, it's all in like magic marker and crayon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, it looks like it was written by, you know, and drawn by like, you know, like a six year old, which it was. Sure. Yeah. And so I grew up loving comic books and uh, I had an older brother who, um, you know, I six, was six years older than me. So I got his hand me downs and uh, I was especially fond. I got mainly gone into the comics because of the Marvel horror comics. Right. Yeah. Because I because, I, you know, I, I you know, I. I remember loving horror since, you know, as far back as I can go. And those very early comic books, man, made such an impression on me. Uh, I also loved the Western comic books. You know, Marvel had the Rawhide Kid and the Two-Gun Kid. Yeah. Uh, DC had Jonah Hex. Yeah, Jonah Hex is awesome. Vig the Vigilante, uh, like a really old Vigilante, tiny guy. Um, Lash. Which, yeah, that, yeah. That I Lash. Loved when they did um, the like the animated series would have vigilante in it, yes, or yes. Um, or when they went to the Western times and stuff like that, I always thought vigilante was just such a, a cool character, even though he's so simple, you know. Simplicity is what makes characters open to so many wide variations of interpretation. Yeah, right. That's why mm -hmm. we have you know that's why we have all these reinventions of uh, of Batman. Right, because he's so incredibly simple. Right, you 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 get him in one sentence. Right, he's of you know he's a guy, parents murdered as a child, he witnessed it, and so he's getting symbolic revenge by dressing up as a bat and going after bad guys. Boom, you get him. Yep. Right, but then you get to fill in all the details. So I was just working from the title, Six Gun Gorilla. That's all I had. Yeah, it's a blank slate, basically. You know, it, it was a total blank slate. It's a very big box. You know. Oh my God! It just it was it set off a firecracker in my head, and it you know I'd written I'd been writing screenplays for 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 decades, short stories, prose, uh, comic book scripts. Um, you know I'm especially glad that I wrote so many comic book scripts because it is an incredibly it's it's a very counterintuitive medium to write in. Yeah, because you're telling a story in snapshots. Mm -hmm. It's unnatural, For is sure. what I would say. It's a very unnatural form of storytelling. You have to picture the page in your head, and you have to imagine the panels, and then you describe them. Very unusual, you know. It's not like just uh, like a screenplay where you're describing something as it happens, or writing a novel where you're describing what's going on inside the person's head or from sure. their point of point of view, right? Right. Yeah, no, that's why I love talking with you, because you are uh, such a student of the craft, and not only with comics, like you're a huge movie buff, um, and, you know, in my opinion, I think you know, a really like knowledge about history as well, um, so you have a lot to talk about, which, you know, I love being on streams with you because of that, uh, oh, thanks, because I learn so thanks, much man. as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks, um, man. No problem. Uh, this I hope I don't come. I said I hope I don't come off as like a know-it-all. No, no, not at all. I, I, I feel like you're a person that knows things, and you like other people to know. Like you like sharing the knowledge, and yeah, I dig that because I like knowing things as well. You know, absolutely. Uh, and I like learning from other people too. And that's mm -hmm. you know, I love that uh, that free flow uh, exchange. Right, and, and being a writer, especially. Um, knowledge is your best tool like knowing about things and situations and uh could really you could relay that to a character and even though you're not that character you could you know become them for a little bit uh know the things that Absolutely. they know in the, yep. in the different situations so life experience is a great tool for a writer in any a medium it is it is. Uh, of course, I'm also a guy who believes in doing his research. Oh, and sure. uh, even and normally it's something I really enjoy. 
Uh, right now, I'm working on like a top secret project. I can't really talk about it, but the, re the research uh, involves uh, dog fighting. And it's like the most depressing shit ever. And so it's like, you know, I'm used to like, usually planes, I enjoy research. Like planes or canines? No, like canines. Like pit oh, bulls. no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just, okay. oh, God, it's horrible, right? But normally doing the research is one of the things I love. Yeah. Uh, before I wrote this, of course, I, you know, I, uh, you know, had been reading books on Old West history for a while. Mm -hmm. Problem with Old West research is the first thing you realize about 10, 15 minutes into starting research into the Old West is that you're not dealing with history, you're dealing with mythology. Yeah, like uh, tall tales, right? At, well, yeah, because a lot of these a lot of these characters, a lot of these historical figures, like uh, you know, uh, Bat Masterson, uh, Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Billy the Kid, uh, Wild Bill, these were people that were being mythologized in their own lifetime. Yeah, well, well, you, you think about it too, right? You have the Wild West and you have America, which you know, America is the size that it is. And you only have information that is basically hearsay. You don't have someone in Arizona calling someone in Georgia, telling them directly. It's, you know, it's a it's a game of telephone, you know, without the telephone, you know, exactly. sitting around. So this guy tells that guy and then that guy makes up something else maybe because he forgot how exactly it went. And it's a domino effect and it turns into these grand, you know, legendary bouts and stories absolutely yeah. absolutely uh you know before you mentioned tombstone which i'm very fond of also mm -hmm. uh and and that's generally very historically accurate uh you know uh his, you know old west historians of course they would wrinkle their nose at me saying that but when you compare it to the other films that have been made over the last hundred years right about that incident it it's it's actually pretty on the money yeah, yeah, I read uh, a lot of books, you know, kind of like telling the uh, eyewitnesses of that. They did it at a whole, whole court case that I read about in one of the books um, that went over it, you know, having eyewitnesses there. And that one, it was, you know, historically accurate. accurate. Uh, in the movie Wyatt Earp, I feel like they tried to paint Wyatt Earp as like this bad person. It was kind of like depressing. Also, I hate Kevin Costner. I think he's not that great of an actor. So <laughs> yeah, White Earp, White Earp was a bummer of a movie, yeah, yeah, and sure. it wasn't fun. Mm -hmm. It was missing that sense of uh, fun and adventure. Yeah. That uh, I'm not saying every western should have. You know, we've had deconstructionist westerns. You know, in the 70s that were very good, mm -hmm. but I also feel like things have been deconstructed to death. Oh yeah, and, and, and we see that a lot in comics too. You know, the deconstruction uh, of the hero. That's that's what that's what I'm fighting against here. Yeah. You know, I, I that's ex I wanted to do the exact opposite of that. And that doesn't mean being stupid or meatheaded. You know, you want to do things in a smart way and hopefully take the uh, the reader someplace maybe they didn't expect to go. But uh, everything's been deconstructed to death yeah. and everything is so meta. You and know, I, I love this point um, that Sangus. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Is saying, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, no one actually knows who shot Johnny Ringo, which I love that twist in Tombstone where, like, that totally could have happened, right? It could have. Um, it could have. I love that. And I then, of it. course, it's, you know, it's, you know, uh, you know, Val Kilmer's uh, Doc Holliday. I'll, I'm come I'll, I'm gonna come right out and say it. Best ho Doc Holiday yeah. ever. It might it might be Val Kilmer's best role ever. It is. Oh, easy. It's, it's, easily his best role. Yeah. Amazing. But, yeah, amazing, yeah. amazing, and of course, you know Kurt Russell, the, the, Sam Elliott, the whole cast in yeah. that is 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 just uh, spectacular. Yeah, I could but, quote that movie for days. Yeah, yeah me, I, me too. I, I want to. Um, we got we got some good viewers in here. I want to show the trailer because your trailer is amazing. Oh, thanks, then, brother. Uh, we got some questions in here uh, from the chat that we're gonna go over. So let's. Oh, Michael Bancroft, what's up, brother? Yeah, Michael's in here. He shot Johnny Ringo. He says. Oh no, Michael! Don't do it. How could you? All right, let's see here. Ryan Chris Gal, your book Six Gun Gorilla is excellent. Six Gun Gorilla, awesome, awesome comic book. We've all heard the stories. 
we've all heard the legends. Wyatt Earp, Doc Holliday, Billy the Kid. But there's a secret history to the Old West. One that seems too strange to be true, but... Well, we all know what they say about the truth. Very big ape. Very big guns. Throwing very big holes. Very bad people. I think the world is finally ready to hear the story of the strangest, the most startling Western hero of them all. Six-Gun Gorilla. Long days of vengeance. Oh, oh, yeah. That was awesome, man. Thanks, man. Thanks. That turned out beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, the guy who did it for me uh, just did a spectacular job. Uh, and it was easy for me to storyboard because all I had to do was just, like, cut and paste... Um, pages you know panels from the comic and then draw little arrows like hey could you maybe make this thing go that way and so on and so forth can you maybe layer this maybe you know you're gonna have him like appearing out of the <laughs> out of the out of the dust and smoke and yeah, and, it's, no, that's yeah, cool. and, and, and uh all of the gunshots in that and the music and all that i provided all that stuff the music is from a uh, forgotten pistolero which is which is a terrific uh, italian western public domain Nice. And, and uh, all of the gunshots are taken directly from Sergio Leone movies. Perfect. Those are the best ones, man. I, I, you know, people they are, are. They are. Man, Once Upon a Time in the West is so good. Oh, the best. The best ever. And my, well, you know what? I vacillate. I vacillate best Western ever, Once Upon a Time in the West, and Shane. Yeah, you know? yeah. It dep depends on what day of the week you ask. Me, but there, <laughs> but there's so many great ones, man. So many great ones, and I love the old American ones. You know, uh, you know, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Yeah. Uh, and the Italian ones, of course, not just the uh, Sergio Leone ones. The ones by Sergio Corbucci, like Django, like uh, uh, the Great Silence. Uh, and then there are there's a sort of subgenre known as the uh as the circus spaghettis and oh, really? yeah and that's partly what inspired this because i was thinking to myself okay you got a gorilla in the old west what is a gorilla going to be doing with guns right in, right Which in the old have, west i love that because it reminds me of like that uh uh buffalo bill element right yes you know, with his traveling circus and annie oakley the old um, west shows right the old west shows which i when i was a kid reading about all this you know western tales and stuff uh that got me into it you know learning about that and how everything was like fun you know yep. um so that, that's kind of like a, a different side to the west where you have that kind of attraction that traveling uh you know shootout circus well, the uh, which I, it's yeah, romantic I you know there's a romance mm -hmm. there uh, the Old West is the American myth, right? Mm -hmm. It's like uh, the like the um, the uh, Norwegians and the uh, and, and the and the Finns and the Swedes and everybody, all of the Scandinavians. What do they have? They have Beowulf. The yeah. English. What do they have? King Arthur. Uh, the Germans. What do they have? The Ring of the Nibelungs. And what do we have? We have the old west. We have the yep. gunfight at the OK Corral. We got yeah. Billy the Billy the Kid and all these all these other characters that actually happen to be real people yeah, fantastic yeah this oh nevada smith yeah that was a partial inspiration for me too actually uh indigenous indigenous monstrosity 
Yeah, that's a great one. Compañeros with Franco Nero, Thomas Million, and Jack Pal Palance. That's freaking fantastic. The Mercenary, also by Corbucci, also with Franco Nero, also with Frank Palance. If you haven't seen that 656 comics, get on that shit now. You'll love it. So Bancroft wants to know, I, I don't know if this was about Six Gun or your, you. What's your preferred revolver? My preferred revolver is, of course... The Cult Peacemaker. Don't worry, this is not real. It's classic, man. <laughs> classic. But yeah, uh, I have um, I got a replica somewhere of an old kind of like a uh, um, a a cap and ball. Uh, oh, nice. One. Look at this guy, slick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me see. <laughs> yeah, pistol tricks. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, a, I just, you know, I'm nerdy like that. <laughs> <laughs> same brother, same. If I, if I'd get mine out, I'd, I'd be doing the same thing. Um, and then we had a, we had a question. Oh yeah, there you go. So the, uh, wanted you to show off your weapons, and there you just had it. There's yep. your, your weapon show right there, man. Ah, and six five six mentions Kioma. Go now, save Kioma. <laughs> it, it's it has like one of the wackiest soundtracks you've ever heard. It's like this fall Leonard Cohen. Yeah, right. It's oh god, yeah. That's the last of the great Italian westerns. Like that was a genre that was on its way out, but they had like one last good one, and that was it. Actually, yeah, I really liked, uh, which I only saw recently, probably last year sometime. Uh, Duck you sucker. Doc, are you soccer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, love that movie. Yeah, uh, you were really long, but it was enjoyable. It's, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Fun. Well, I, well, you know, Leone kept. That's one of the things I love about Leone. He kept working on a bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger canvas. Right. But he was such a genius, he could get away with that. And you see, other contemporary filmmakers when they imitate him, they fall flat on their faces. Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah, I understand you love Leone. I love Leone too, but that's a time, that's a place, that's an era. People keep trying to recreate it. It's not going to happen. Right. Now, now this is actually, uh, the is this the second issue of the book? No, no. Uh, let me see what I get. What I got, because I know you've been is, making these for a while. You've been writing yeah, I have. These for a while. Yeah, I have. This is the trade paperback, right? Oh, uh, I was coming out with uh, with this, the new one, issue number seven, the big gun down. Love that cover. Yeah, isn't that spectacular? By uh, mm -hmm. Adrian Sabar, rest in peace, brother. Um, and uh, I figured, okay, well, if I'm releasing that, I'm not just going to release that by itself because there are a yep. lot of people that missed the previous campaign for the trade paperback. Correct. Yeah. And uh, I don't, do I have the old one handy? No, I don't. Uh, but I figured, okay, if I'm going to put out the trade paperback again, then I should uh, give them something new, right? Yeah, I should give sure. it a, a variant cover. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a variant cover guy, but. Me neither. Me neither. But a lot, right? But a lot of like of our backers are, of course. So when we give, when we offer variant covers, it's not like we're double dipping or something like that. People want this stuff, so yeah. you know, I so I use this, which is a beautiful variant cover by the great Canaan White. Beautiful man, yeah, is, that is everything is that, you want on the on the cover right there. Gorgeous, gorgeous, sure. absolutely stunning. Uh, oh. co colors by a fellow named Derek Dow, who is a uh, old West painter. Wow. Like had, had never worked in comics before. That's and, great, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he always uses these lovely earth tones, and you know, I mean, the proof the proof is in the pudding. One of them. Yeah. No, I might have to uh, get his info from you because I'm going to do a, a western with one of my my Lost Pages characters down the line here. I was hoping. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really excited about that. Uh, but yeah, so you guys could catch up on the story here. And is that the featured perk? You get the graphic novel and the newest issue, The Big Gun Down. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you can buy the big gun. You can buy uh, this, the first, the trade paperback, Lost, right. uh, uh, Long Days of Vengeance. You can get this for 35 bucks. Now, that may sound steep for a comic book, but it is. A hundred and forty-eight yeah. pages. Look at that man. Yeah. So you're you're not getting one comic. 
you're getting six comics. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, and not a lot of people know. Like, if you're if you're not an avid comic book reader, people don't realize that a a single issue is usually around like 24 pages, 22 to 24 pages. Yep. Um, so like something, you know, if if my viewers have purchased Magic Cop, that was around, uh, it was over 100 pages. The story was 92 pages of story um, and it rounded Excellent. up to over, over 100. So yeah, that, that was four issues in there. So if you get this guy, it's six issues um, for, I think that price is great. And, you know, go for the, the, $45 tier, get the newest issue of it, get caught up. Um, yeah, and, you know, talking about variants, when you bring out a, a kind of a collected version of your stories, uh, I was, you know, I was thinking about that the other day because I'm like, man, if, if I, you know, do another campaign for the Lost Pages, who am I going to get to top Simon Bisley on the very, you know, the variant cover? I'm just going to nope. have to get another Bisley or something. <laughs> Dude, Phil? Nobody, be nobody beats the biz. I know, dude. I nobody know. beats the biz. Yeah, yeah you so, painted, you painted yourself into a corner there, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. But I'm happy about it. You gotta uh, be. You gotta be. Yeah. And so I, I would implore everybody to pick up the trade as well as the new issue. That's what I'm gonna do, uh, for sure. I haven't gotten a chance to to back yet, but I'm definitely going to because this is right thanks, up my brother. alley, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. Beautiful work. And this Canon cover is killer, man. And I should mention that, uh, you know, if you buy them together, I knock five bucks off the price. And also, everybody, regardless, is uh, whatever they order is Ooh. getting one of these. Yes, 6 a.m., man. Look at that. MC Mark Marianelli eats them up like <laughs> spaghetti or maybe some Cheerios. He masticates his foes, yo's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that, he, you know he's oh man he's he's just uh a great he's the, talent he's the sleeping giant he's like uh, you know i'm always on his ass like when are you launching your campaign when are you launching your campaign yeah dude when when he came out and did that whole collage of cg character oh and, goodness man it was amazing you know he he put magic hop in there doing like a wheelie in his car so cool <laughs> so so we hired him to do all the lost pages characters for a sticker set Oh um, hell yeah, hell so yeah, good, yeah. Uh, so we're you know good friends with Six AM. He's he's awesome. Oh, he's such a great guy, such a great guy, such a major major yeah. talent. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, anything else you want to say about this one? What's uh? Oh, actually, I wanna. I had a question about. Sure. Let's see this bad boy down here. This uh, this guy. What's going on here? Oh yeah. Well, that is going to be a crossover. That's going to be uh, Lit Devils, uh, uh, Doc Alpha. Yeah. In a story with Preston, Exit Only, Acevedo's, hey, Doc yeah. Salem. Mm -hmm. Everybody, go back Doc Salem now. He's just a few bucks away from 10K, and that book should be doing way better than it is. And uh, also, of course, uh, my version of uh, Six Gun Gorilla. It's going to be a, uh, a jam piece. Uh, we're, I, I kind of want to have a, not a script, but at least an outline to work with, but we're also thinking about like, one of us is going to write a chapter and then the next guy is going to step in, right, right from where fun. he left off. And so it could be, it could be a disaster. It could be <laughs> awesome. We shall, we, we, we shall see. And there's, yeah. Uh, yeah, something like this could work. Um, like you said, where maybe you introduce the, your, you know, your respected characters yourselves in like a maybe, you know, four pages each script and then kind of collab on when they meet each other and stuff like that. That's something that I've never done. I think that would be super fun. I really love the ideas of crossovers. Um, and, you know, one day I think it would be cool to do kind of like a, you know, so-and-so kills the CG universe where it's just like, <laughs> you know, everybody in there uh that would be crazy that would be awesome that yeah. would be awesome of course what we're really all waiting for is the uh is the uh side scrolling um cg fighting game yes that would like be C cg mortal combat yep. <laughs> yep that that's that that would be awesome man i've seen some uh screenshots of some workings that are that are going around with that so oh. hopefully uh that comes to fruition well, there's the Xenotype game, which which, mm -hmm. which 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 looks like uh, hella fun. 
Yeah, I still want to do a magic cop uh, side scrolling beat em up. I think that would be so fun as well. Hell yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, and then another thing I wanted to show off was uh, this little guy here. What's all this then? Ah, uh, yes. Um, you know, uh, Adrian, Blame who was our artist for the uh, first seven issues, he's no longer with us. And issue number eight is going to be illustrated by the great Preston Acevedo. Yeah. And he is doing a canvas cover. Wow. Yeah, he's going to do a painted canvas cover. And uh, uh, yeah, and we were kicking ideas around. And he said, I was like, well, what do you really want to do? Right. Because when you're working with artists, you want to make sure that your artist is happy. And, you know, they're going to and they're going to, you know, not only because that's the right thing, the right way to treat people, but but also because they're going to do their absolute finest work if that's they're gonna have fun fire. exactly you want you you want your the artist that you're working with to have a blast and and he told me what i want to do is i want to do a uh, like a satire cover right like a parody cover they call yeah. it right and so this is going to be a parody cover of the um stranger in a strange land i believe uh album cover for uh the uh, iron maiden single yeah very cool man and That's there are going to be a lot of Easter eggs. This is just the sketch that he did, like you know, because of course he does like a little sketch before he does the painting. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, the line work. That yeah. that's the uh, dude. This is so cool. I can't wait for that. Now, is it is this going to be the style we're going to be seeing in the interiors as well? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I think that the interior style is going to be, um, you know, a. I'm hoping it's not going to be a jarring transition. Sure. Uh, at the same time, I want to let Preston be Preston. Right. I mean, you you see comic book runs. Um, you know, the artist adds a little bit of himself to the character he's he's drawing. So you know, you'll have your eras in uh, in doing Six Gun Gorilla as well, which I think is cool. It's something I don't think we've seen yet in uh, CG. Nope. You know, uh, and. I think only great is going to come of this because, you know, you're a talented writer and he's a talented oh, artist me. and we're going to uh, see some awesome stuff coming from that. So uh, a I new hope, era of six gun gorilla. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be really exciting. And uh, there's going to be a lot of CG Easter eggs, by the way, in the, oh, back, yeah. in, in the, in the background of that. So yeah, keep, keep, keep your eyes open. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, uh, Preston's a great guy and an incredible artist and, uh, you know, uh, easy to work with. Yeah. And, you know, I like to think I'm easy to work with. I try, <laughs> I try to be, you know, yeah. because, you know, you can never lose sight of the fact that we're making comic books. How awesome is that? Oh yeah. It's, it's so cool. Yeah. It, it yeah. Is amazing. Yeah. You, you got to keep that G whiz, uh, childlike, not childish, childlike attitude. <laughs> yeah. When you're doing yeah. this stuff. For sure. Yeah, everybody check this out. Um, pick up the featured tier. Thanks, it's, man. You guys won't regret it. This is, and you know, he's going to be putting more out. You know, this is uh, Brian's passion. And as you could see, he's already working on next stuff and more stuff with, with different IPs and different people. Yep. Um, I'm excited for that stuff as well, man. Uh, Thanks, yeah. brother. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Um, Anything else before I'd, I'd like to jump on and talk a little bit about the lost pages, and then we can cut Hell out. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Jeez. Yeah. Uh, um. You know. Uh. There's gonna be. Uh. Just three more issues left in this arc. Sweet. And I don't think I'm gonna be printing uh trade paper paperback for the next uh three campaigns. Uh. Basically because it's confusing for the customer for the backer when they come out, come onto the Indiegogo page and they're like, okay, why is one comic book $15 and one of them is 35? Yeah. Right. So from now on, I think I'm just going to be offering the floppies. Yeah. So and what, this, what you could do after that is do a big collection when you're done, you know, of course that's yeah. Yeah. yeah that's going to happen, but people don't wait for that. Yeah. Because for sure. Because in order for me to get to that point, you have to back like the the current campaign and the next one and the one after that. Right, but so yeah, can actually come out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying this is your last chance ever to get the trade paperback. I'm saying it's going to be a while before you can get the trade paperback again. Get caught up, people.
get thanks. caught up. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so just want to run through what was going on with the lost pages. Uh, we just oh. hit 20K today. Woohoo! Uh, yeah. Oh, con and congratulations, brother. Thanks, man. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been crazy. And we showed off, um, I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I think I still have it someplace. Um, where is it? I'll pull it up right here. So this is um, the newest thing that we unlocked at 20K. I was showing everybody earlier is this character, uh, Drift Legend. So he is our manga style character. This is a trading card by Odie from Xenotype. Oh, Odie's just on fire, man. Yeah, he's killing it. And I think this is the first thing he did outside of working with Liam, um, you know, after Xenotype. So he did this trading card. It is just kick ass. This character is a mix between, I'd say, like uh, Speed Racer and Shang-Chi. So he's got that martial arts background. Um, he's very, very intelligent. So the way he fights is kind of like uh, how Sherlock Holmes fight fought in those Guy Ritchie movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so he's very angular and mathematical and methodical. Uh, and the four-page short story that is going to be for this character is going to be drawn by Kyung Lee. So Looking forward to that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't wait. Um, so that's our newest thing. And yeah, people check it out. Um, we still have some Simon Bisley signed covers left. What? And yeah, we still got what? we still got some. I think we have like nine left. And or uh, people, yeah, and people, 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 people. I'm 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 sorry to interrupt you, Phil. No problem. Pe people, how can you snooze on that? You know what happens when you snooze? You lose. Get on sure. those covers now. <laughs> Don't wait because if you wait, <laughs> you're yeah. gonna be shit out of luck. That's true. Um. Yeah, and we have one week to go. We have like six days left uh, for the the sixty day campaign. Got some original art on here, and we'll we're going to be adding some more sketch cards. Preston did some awesome sketch cards for us. Uh, Painted them. Yeah, he's great. Did you see his uh, trading card he did? No. Check this did out. So you, I you know, I don't think I did. So you know the character Sims doing right? Vane. The big, yes. The yes. Big guy. I didn't so, know if we could talk about that, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let me see here. Simon's a boss. Love that dude. Um, is this where? Yeah, so here's Vane. Vane <laughs> is a badass demon bounty hunter from hell. Um, he's able to come to Earth to hunt down these demons that have, you know, skipped out of hell and drag them back. Uh, he's got a, an even darker side than we, that what we see here, which will be revealed in the in the story. But I hired on Preston to do a painted trading card and this is what he came up with check this out yes yeah i have seen this yeah, yeah. badass badass yeah man so <laughs> if you guys love like this we went kind of like all busley out on this oh, you know and simon and preston are big busley fans so yep. this character if you love that uh that just just a badass kicking it you know kicking butt uh badass you're gonna love this guy. mofo yeah for sure so uh, every backer is going to get one of these trading cards, as well as every trading card we have, except for the ones that were exclusive. Um, so you'll have a lot of characters to look at and read about on their bios, on the cards. Um, but if you guys haven't picked up, oh, here's our blockhead. Our silhouette oh, blockhead. Bitchin', bitchin'. And if you haven't picked up the bonus comic, please do, uh, because that's going to have a lot more characters. You'll be able to have their first appearances um like vane like drift legend uh and then we showed off this which is uh, a little layout by kyung lee for the first page of the drift legend story his car doing donuts around uh these thugs so man everything's everything's happening just uh really excited to be uh, a part of everything and to know guys like you brian it's uh, oh oh likewise awesome. likewise phil this has been such a uh, just an incredible blessing being part of uh, this artists collective that's uh, oh, yeah. formed. And uh, God, I've been, been, been have met so many awesome people, yourself included, Phil, and so much talent 
the talent pool yes. here is freaking ridiculous. Marvel and DC, they're getting their writers off of Twitter and their artists off of freaking Tumblr. <laughs> this is where the this is where the passion is. Every right. project here is a passion project. You can't lose. No, you're you're totally right, man. And I hope the uh, the you know CG con happens so we could actually hang out and yeah. uh, do stuff. Get Michael Bancroft up here. Yeah, um, what's up, Michael? Awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah. Back six gun gorilla, everybody. Um, where can people find you, Brian? You can find me on the Twitter. I'm on the oh. Twitter at okay. uh, Brian Christgau, capital B R I R I A N, capital C h r i s t chris like christmas g a u and you, yeah chris cow and you can also find me uh on uh the facebook as well very good very good yeah, yeah I, I hear you have a uh, quite the sword collection i do i do i busted it out on one of michael's streams <laughs> you could see you wait where did it go Somebody stole my Conan sword. Oh, that's right. I was doing work. I was working out with it upstairs because it's like ridiculously heavy. <laughs> that's awesome. See you doing lifts and strikes. Yep, yep, yep. Awesome. Well, also oh, that, that exercise that guts does in uh in berserk. This one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For for your uh for your um your uh not your Tribes. traps or your, for yeah. your tri triceps. Triceps, yeah. Yeah, and also you like the turns and also the sword waggling, you know, which is good for your forearm and I digress. <laughs> yeah, you heard it first. Get a Conan sword if you guys want to yes. work out your arms. Uh please do and then come on and show show us your swords. So <laughs> hail everybody. Uh thank you so much for tuning in uh to the stream. Back these projects back six gun gorilla uh, because there's going to be more to come from Brian. I'm super excited for it. And uh, thanks for uh, coming on, Brian. Oh, thank you so much for having me, brother. Thank you okay. so much. Of it's course, not... man. Yeah. Uh, see you, everybody. Have